guys also find the clone con the clone consoles of Nintendo to be kind of weird? Like first you have the mini editions of the NES and SNES, then you have the classic editions of the NES and SNES, which anybody not up to date with those titles might think we're talking about the original consoles. And then you have the NES controller shaped online Nintendo Switch controllers, which basically function like the side controllers on a Nintendo Switch. And there's probably a few others I'm forgetting. But there is one I especially know about, and it's when a Nintendo reached out to Hyperkin to make a clone, of, another clone of the SNES in January of 2018. And that's what we'll be looking at today. So today we'll be unboxing the Hyperkin Super Retron uh, Super Nintendo. So something I do feel obligated to disclaim, and I'm sure you fellow Nintendo nerds will have already figured this out, is that this is not the original Super Nintendo, this does not use the same shells, this is a complete redesign, which is probably the reason why they were able to price this under $100, and to my knowledge, this is the only Super Nintendo clone that costs under $100, so I picked this thing up for $70, which I'm pretty sure is the average market price for it now, and I got this at my local VGH video game hardware store, which as the name suggests, sells used and new video game hardware, movies, video games, and hardware for other electronics, and within like 10 minutes of buying this, I realized that this is not the original Super Nintendo, but this should function like the, like the original console in pretty much every way, and this does get generally good reviews, so let's unbox this. So I'm pretty fresh on the knowledge I have on this system, as I did just pick it up yesterday, and from the look of it, like on the original Super Nintendo, you have the reset button and the power button, and you have the slot for the cartridges. These look like the same ports for the controllers, and something not in the original Super Nintendo is an eject button, which I've heard good things about because people complain that the original Super Nintendo gripped the cartridges too hard and it made it weird to pull it out. And this does uh, come in HD, also not in the original console. So uh, here's the front, here's the sides of the box. Also, this is a very smooth cardboard container, and it has a 720p premium controllers, and that's another thing not in the original console, is that this does actually come with two controllers, which I enjoy. But all right, let's open this up. And why do I have to use this obscene knife? Because this is an obscene channel, and this console is obscene. Right. Now, something I've seen in other videos is that this cardboard is usually purple, but mine's red for some reason. Alright, and here's the console. And up here, you have your controllers. I'll just take this piece out. Alright, so... Here's one of your controllers. Now, this uh, this does look a lot like the original Super Nintendo controllers, but it's actually not. The shell is almost identical, but it's missing the ring around the D-pad, and the paint job is different on, around the buttons. And something else to note is that these two buttons are pitted, while these two buttons are rounded on top. Personally, I would have preferred it if all the buttons were pitted. And these uh, start and select buttons are a nice squishy rubber, which is similar to, actually no, that's exactly what they had in the original console, and here's the D-pad. This um, feels a little, uh, a little rough, but it's but it feels pretty functional, and this looks like the exact D-pad you would have in the original NES, control, uh, NES controller. Here's the LNR triggers, nice, and we'll say this isn't the most a uh, comfortable controller in the world, but it's functional for what it has to accomplish. And then, of course, it comes with a uh, second one for two players. Nice. And here's the main attraction, the actual console piece. And uh, here's some instructions. Um, this uh, thank you card. And there's a last box in here. Let's see, um, 
Okay, so this is the HDMI cord, the um, ACR adapter, which was on the original console, and a uh, micro USB cord and its, um, its box or head, whatever you want to call it, and uh, that's it. So here's a look at the instruction booklet, all unfolded. You can pause and look at this. Looks like it comes with English, Spanish, um, maybe French. Not really sure what this is. Um, this looks like French again, and then maybe Chinese or Japanese. I don't really know. But all right, here's the, uh, here's the actual console. And I will say all pieces of this are made with a very fine plastic. Here's the um, Hyperkin logo, which I'm told will actually light up when it's uh, powered on. And here are the ports for the controllers. Let's see how uh, where those fit. Kind of have to force it in there. But yeah, it, uh, it fits okay. Oh crap, can you not take it back out? Okay, so you can get the controller back out, it just takes a bit of force. Now to take a look at the actual console, like on the original Super Nintendo, you have your power switch and the reset button. Then not in the original console, you have a eject button, which people have praised Nintendo for that because they said that on the original console, trying to pull the uh, cartridge out, uh, there's a lot of grippiness to it and it felt awkward to pull it out they said they thought they were going to break it and these two lips uh fold down to put your cartridge and you can't see it but this uh the c jack button will raise a bar that will pop the cartridge out and there's your hyperlink logo i've been told that that lights up when the when this console is power running to it here's one side and on the back is your av ports for if you're still playing like on a uh, CRT TV, which is what this, uh, which is what the original Super Nintendo was for, then you're gonna need that to hook this up to the TV. And there's a HDMI output, which is uh, what modern TVs and consoles use to hook up to each other. And there's your micro USB port to run power to this thing. And there's your uh, 60 by 9 and 4.3 aspect ratio, uh, ratio switch. There's a, another side and. On the bottom, you have a NTSC and PAL switch. This basically controls the lag based on what kind of TV you have. All right, pretty small console for a Nintendo console. But onto the rest of the hardware, there's your HDMI cord. One end goes into the, uh, the output hole and the other goes into your TV. Is your uh, AV adapter? The uh, color cords correspond to what uh, to which hole that it goes into, and then put one end into the console, and then the other end to the TV, just like the HDMI cord. And uh, the AV adapter was what, uh, cons what what was what consoles used before the uh, before they switched to HDMI cords. And there's your uh, micro universal uh, MC cord. Pretty much looks like a charger you would find on your phone or something, and here's the head for that. Alright, so that's all the contents in the box, and this will obviously play uh, Super Nintendo cartridges, and uh, this is also compatible with uh, Super Famicom cartridges, and I'm not sure, but I believe it would also be compatible with the, um, the port that you would put a, um, an NES cartridge on, so you could play this on here. I don't have that, so I can't test it. Okay, so that's pretty much the unboxing. Once again, it comes with the console, two controllers, thank you Nintendo, a uh, AV adapter, an HDMI cable, and a uh, universal UMC port in its head. We'll say that's uh, it's quite a lot of hardware for a $70 price. Now, unfortunately, I, did not, I was not able to get a game for this, so I can't show you how that works, but at the very least, I can power it up on my TV, so let's go do that right now. Okay, another thank you to Nintendo. This controller comes with like 9 to 10 feet of cord, which is great for reaching my couch over there. 
But a no thank you is that the uh, HDMI cable that came with this is embarrassingly weak, so I'm using the one for my Wii U that works just fine. Let's, uh, let's power this up. Oh, and it lights up. Now, the original uh, Super Nintendo and same with the NES and uh, N64, they um, you get no main menu like you do now. It's just insert a game, power it up, and it, the game immediately pops up to your screen. So, I'm not really expecting to uh, get much from this. Yeah, I'm just getting some static and a black screen. Oh well, hopefully it'll be different once I can get a game. But on that note, uh, I'll see you guys later. That's it. Bye.